Good evening. Residents of a section of condominiums were evacuated this afternoon. Emergency crews rushed to a fire in the area of 18th Street and 49th Avenue. Uh, we arrived on scene and found an upstairs condo bedroom on fire. And we attacked it with one hose line. Uh, there's no injuries. The cause of the fire is undetermined at this time. The incident is under investigation. The decision is in. Employees at Real Canadian Superstore outlets in Alberta could go on strike as early as October 6th. The United Food and Commercial Workers say the union has received at a 97% strike mandate from its members. Union spokesman Doug O'Halloran says bargaining with Loblaw, the parent company for superstores, has bogged down. The union represents 8,500 people who work at superstores in Edmonton, Calgary, Red Deer, Grand Prairie, Lethbridge, Fort McMurray, Medicine Hat, Lloydminster and Camrose. It was a night filled with music and giving as local residents were treated to the talents of country singing sensation Carolyn Dawn Johnson at the Vic Juba Theatre. However, the focus of the night was to aid a community centre which helps young Lloydminster residents. Graham McCann was there and has more. I want to welcome you to a very special show tonight and thank you all for coming out not only to see an incredibly talented lady but also to help out a great cause the Lloydminster Community Youth Centre. The Vic Juba Theatre was packed on Friday with fans of Carolyn Dawn Johnson, a multi-award winning country music artist that performed to help expand the local youth centre. I've got people in my living room and it's very close and intimate and um, this is a great cause for a youth center so it makes my heart happy to be part of it. This is Johnson's first time performing in Lloydminster and she found the border city a welcome stop. It's a smaller community but I'm, I'm from a smaller community so it feels pretty homey to me and uh, it's actually bigger than where I'm from so Lloydminster is like a big city compared to Westlock or Deadwood which is where I grew up. Currently, the youth center is housed at St. John's Anglican Hall, which has become too small for the amount of kids that come through. We are in a very small area right now, maybe 750, 800 square feet. It's nothing for us to get 100 kids a night through the center from Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Approximately seven to 10,000 uh, kids come through the center every year, so it, we consider it to be an essential for Lloyd Minster. The center is in talks with the city and is hoping to announce a new building within the next few weeks. They take all different kinds of road trips and it's a place for the kids that feel very comfortable about having an opportunity to be in a place that they can um, have a good positive atmosphere in Lloyd Minster. This isn't the first time a musician came to town for the center. Last year they hosted George Canyon. So this is kind of our staple every year thing that we would like to continue to put on and we kind of call it a concert fundraiser. Any kids from the community are welcomed at the youth group, especially if they need help and support pursuing their ambitions. Look, I believed in myself. I loved music so much. It was a, you know, a long journey and lots of stepping stones to get there, but um, it felt right. It felt like that was what I was supposed to do. And so, you know, anybody from a small town, anybody from a big town, you can do it if that's really what you're meant to do. I think we're all given dreams for a reason. <laughs> Graham McCann, Newcap News. It was, an it was an emotional day in the border city as many gathered for the grand opening of Kiwanis Park. And as Bart Pidyasek reports, the park's gazebo was unveiled today as a finishing touch and as a dedication to local families who have lost children. I hope everyone will come and, and view the plaque. It's a very, very nice uh, tribute. Kiwanis club members and city officials joined seven local families as they revealed a special plaque on the park grounds. Engraved names of seven children, all taken too soon. Really special to be able to put Sarah's name on something. It means a lot. The Leans were one of the families that helped dedicate the gazebo. Their daughter, Sarah, passed away shortly after birth. She didn't get to open her eyes not once. She would be nine this September 26th. So this is really, a, a, it's like an anniversary 
party for her, really. The family was approached by Kiwanis Club President Vera Gallant for the project. Three years ago, Gallant started the campaign to add a playground and gazebo to the property. We talked to a family who had lost a child, threw out an idea to them that, what do you think of making this a memorial? And they loved the idea and right off the bat said they'd be very willing to uh, help out financially towards something like this. And after an army of volunteers and community donations, the park is finally ready to be used. Thanks to the uh, support of the community, we had you know, funds raised that we could uh, come up with what we have today. I think it's just great for the community. Like, you know, we, through our hardship, there becomes a new park and, and everyone gets to enjoy it. So, you know, it's just nice to be part of that. Now, when it's all said and done, this gazebo and this plaque with the names of seven lost children will be a focal point for the area. And one local family says now Kiwanis Park means so much more to them. The kids love to, we, we, our kids aren't even around us right now. They're off and running and playing. And they're already calling the park Sarah's Park, so that's awesome. It's a place yeah. where they can come and, and be with their sisters, so it's good. Bart Pediasek, Newcap News.